While the Poisson distribution is a discrete distribution, when our sample size is sufficiently large, and in this case, more than 20 in our sample, we're going to switch to the normal approximation to the Poisson distribution. So let's take a look at how we're going to calculate our Poisson distribution. In this example, we have on average 28 patients that arrive per hour in a walk-in clinic on Friday between 6 p.m. and midnight. So in this case, since our sample size is 28, it's greater than 20, therefore we're going to use a normal approximation to the Poisson distribution. We can calculate the approximate normal probability of more than 35 arrivals. So in this example, our notation will have our sigma for our standard deviation, our lambda is equal to our average or mu, which is the average number of occurrences per unit. And then our x value will be what we're solving for. So our average value is 28 because we know on average 28 patients arrive. So our mu equals to our lambda. Our standard deviation is the square root of our lambda value. So the square root of 28 is 5.2915. And that gives us a measure of how much variation there is within our process. We can calculate the probability of more than 35 arrivals using our lambda and our standard deviation. So we're solving for 35 arrivals. We want to know more than 35 arrivals. So again, anytime we're using a normal approximation, when it's more than, we're going to add 0.5 to the value we're solving for. So our 35 plus 0.5 is 35.5. And then we're going to use our Poisson distribution. Since we're looking for more than, we're looking for the right-hand side of the distribution. So we're going to do 1 minus the value that we're solving for. Using the Poisson.dist function, we'll start with using our value of x that we're solving for, which is now 35.5 in cell B17. Our mean, or our lambda, that was in cell B11, and we're looking for cumulative because it's more than 35. It could be 36, 37, 38. And that gives us a value of 0.0822, or 8.22% probability that we will have more than 35 arrivals. This makes sense because on average we have 28 arrivals. 35 would be less than 0.5 because it's on that side of the distribution. So logically, 8.22% makes sense. Let's look at the probability that we would have less than 20 arrivals. So again, knowing that we have on average 28, and now we're looking at less than, we would expect this to be less than 50%. Our x value will be 20, because that's what we're solving for. Since we're doing less than here, we're going to subtract 0.5, because we want 19 or less, and we don't include 20 in our calculation. Our probability then, since we're looking at the left-hand side of the distribution, we're not subtracting from 1 this time, and our calculation is our Poisson.dist with our value we're solving for, 19.5 from cell B23, our mean or our lambda from cell B11, again, and again it's cumulative because we're looking for anything less than that. And when we solve for that, we get a value of 0.0478 or 4.78%. And again, comparing that to our average, that makes sense because we would expect a smaller number of less than 20 arrivals. We can use this information then to plan for the probability of how many patients will be coming. In this example, it's healthcare. So we'd want to balance our risk with our scheduling to make sure that we have enough people working during that time. However, in any industry that's making a business decision, if we're looking at staffing, 
we can use this probability and balance it against the risks that we're willing to take and how long it's going to impact our customers if they're waiting to be um, checked out or for service or to speak to someone. So again, very useful information from a business standpoint that we can use for our managerial decisions.